Hi guys, Goffy here and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you about this. This could be my favourite lens that Fujifilm has ever made. And it has been on the channel before because I have hired this lens twice. And every time I gave it back, I just missed it that little bit more. The lens in question is the Fujifilm 33mm f1.4. And I do truly believe this could be my favourite Fujifilm lens. Now first up, I really quickly want to address the size problem because in the past I have been that guy that has moaned that these Fujifilm f1.4 lenses have got a little bit too big. But do you know what? I completely take it back. I was wrong because ultimately at the end of the day, Fujifilm still sell the older lenses. If you don't want this lens because it's too big, then you've still got the f2 35mm. If you really do want f1.4 but you don't want to spend this much money, then you still have the older 35mm f1.4 lens. Fuji haven't stopped selling them and you can still pick them up really easily on the used market. So at the end of the day, what Fuji have done is given people an option. If you want a full frame competing lens, then you now have that option without going and buying a full frame camera. And at the end of the day, it's really not that big. I'm gonna show you some video later of me using it on the X-Pro2, and to be honest with you, I've not really cared about carrying the extra weight. Now, I think an awful lot of people are gonna wonder what this lens is like at f1.4, so that's where we're gonna start this video then. Up on the screen, we've got some f1.4 images, and I truly think this is where this lens comes alive. I do think it offers that kind of full frame look. You know what I'm trying to say there, that like background separation. I thought interestingly, we'd quickly compare it with my Leica camera because I've often felt in the past picking up my Fuji versus my Leica M10 always felt like a little bit of a portrait compromise because I didn't really feel like I had that kind of speed and quality when it came to Fuji lenses. Up on the screen now then, we have that 50mm Summerlux against this 33mm Fuji. You can see a difference in background separation, but I do think the gap has been closed down by this lens. From a sharpness point of view, at f1.4, this lens performs exactly as you'd expect. Even wide open, even at its close focusing distance as well, this lens performs exceptionally well wide open. And to the point that I've not really had to find myself stopping down. I feel like with some lenses, if they're a little bit soft wide open, you find yourself straying away from the wide open down a couple stops to bring back that image quality. Whereas with this, you can just shoot it wide open all the time and still get tack sharp photos. We're gonna quickly talk build and design then, comparing this lens, because I know people like me in the past have moaned about its size, so we stick it next to some other Fuji lenses. Against the 16 to 55 mm f2.8, I think this 33 mm looks tiny. Comparing it to the 16 mm f2.8, it looks quite a little bit bigger. At the end of the day, the lens isn't big or really that heavy, but it's definitely bigger than what some people are used to. If you have got into crop sensor cameras purely for the weight saving, then I can fully understand why this wouldn't make sense. In terms of how the lens feels, it feels solid and dense and the aperture ring clicks very nicely. It's got a very solid click to it, which is much better than I think it was the 18mm f1.4 I tried in the past. I found that to be really sloppy. This one is really good and accurate. This lens is weather sealed. You can see the like rubber gasket around the mount. Personally, I've not used it in heavy rain or anything like that. I've used it in a light rain shower, so I can't really attest to that myself, but that's definitely what it says on paper. One annoying thing I find about these f1.4 lenses is if you're going for the collection, so the 18mm, the 23mm, and the 33mm f1.4, the filter thread does change a little bit. This lens has a 58mm filter thread length, which is the same as the 23, but the 18 I think has a 60 two millimeter filter thread. I do wish all three were the same. It would just make filters a little bit easier, but for many, that's not really gonna matter to them. So then what's this lens like to use? Now, up until recently, I've been predominantly using this lens on the Fujifilm X-H2S, which is arguably best case scenario. And on that camera, the autofocus is so good with these linear motors. The X-H2S is really good at locking onto eyes. And especially when you're shooting wide open of a pretty shallow depth of field, having good eye autofocus is definitely a win. Now, one of the really important upgrades with these newer F1.4 lenses is the linear motors in video. The older F1.4 1.4 lenses, they used to have like a stepping motor in them and you'd actually better hear the lens focusing in your video recording if you used a shotgun mic like I do. 
Now for me and video, this lens has been a bit of a game changer because you can't hear the lens focusing. So for me, this is one of the big reasons as to why I've upgraded. But I feel like I've done a lot of talking about the X-H2S and it's like, well, if you take the best camera and the best lens, then of course it's gonna be good. But what happens if you combine a really new lens with one of the older Fuji bodies? So recently, if you watched my previous video, you'll know that I picked up an X-Pro2 and I've been using this lens a lot over the last month with the X-Pro2 and I have been really enjoying it. Does it look a little bit big? Does it look a bit unbalanced on the camera? Yeah, maybe. To be honest with you, I don't really notice the extra weight and I think the images more than make up for it. However, when it comes to autofocus with the older body on the X-Pro2, the eye autofocus just is nowhere near as good. Now, one of the good things about this lens is even though it's f1.4 and 33mm, on a crop sensor body on a subject two meters away, the depth of field is still 20 centimeters in terms of like acceptable depth of field. So even if you aren't tacking onto someone's eyes, but you are tacking onto their face, they're still going to look in focus. So I don't think the older bodies are gonna matter too much when it comes to this lens because it's just not shallow enough to actually matter too much. I did find using this lens on continuous autofocus on the X-Pro2, it isn't as good as the X-H2S. It's still more than acceptable, but you do find that the camera hunts a little bit and just misses occasionally. The X-H2S is just such a good improvement over those older cameras, especially when the X-Pro2 at this point is, I think, six years old. Now, I do have a little bit of a caveat to all of this, and that's the fact that I don't truly need this lens. I don't actually have a need for it. It is definitely a want. Now, I've been really enjoying this lens, enough for me to want it, but if I was to truly like look at my kit and think about what I needed to make my YouTube videos and my photography, I could get away with the 35mm f2. However, I do think wanting gear, even if you don't need gear, is fine as long as you know that it is a want rather than a need, as long as you know that you're buying something based on what you want rather than what you need, if that makes sense. So for me, I don't actually need this lens, but I did want it because I really like the images that come out of this lens. If you're unsure whether or not you need or want this lens, then I definitely recommend hiring it or even just trying out to begin with one of the 35mm f2 lenses because those little compact Fujicrons are really, really good lenses. However, I personally have zero regrets buying this lens and just because of the way the images look and the kind of the rendering this lens gives in the images, this has become right now my favorite Fujifilm lens. And you know what? I think it is actually the favorite lens that I've used on the Fuji ecosystem. There's just something about it. I think it's that depth of field and just how optically good it is combined with really good autofocus and this newer gen of Fuji cameras that are really good at autofocusing as well. I feel like for the first time, everything's like come together. We've got great cameras, great lenses, and it truly makes crop sensor compete with the full frame cameras. And for that, I am super excited about just how good it is. And I do think it's all of them things coming together that makes me excited about this lens and how much I'm enjoying it. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, please do not forget to like and subscribe. And I'm conscious that recently I've been changing quite a lot of gear and I do plan on doing a bit of a gear update video in the very near future. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.